had seen on some pictures what we could look for. I was skeptical and excited because if this is the place for the crossing, then of course that's, that's a big thing. So I was excited about that. But I was also skeptical because 3,500 years, that's a long time. Their search focused on the 600 chariots the Bible says were destroyed in the Red Sea. Inscriptions thousands of years old and the few chariots recovered from ancient tombs reveal much about the construction of these legendary vehicles of war. Could any of them actually be found on the seafloor off the Nueva Peninsula? If we assume that a number of artifacts were spread out on the seabed, sooner or later corals would start to grow on them. And of course, if you have a number of layers or coral growing on something, it's very hard to distinguish the structure that was there from the very beginning. Though the coral complicates any search here, it may have been instrumental in preserving the shapes of ancient artifacts. For coral is a living organism that will not begin to grow on a foundation of sand or silt. Instead, it must first attach itself to a solid object where it will sometimes conform to the shape of its host. You try to look for 90 degree angles or circular objects, wheel-like structures. So that is what you scan for, so to speak, when you dive. There are situations where you see something that looks like an axle, a hub, something that looks like a wheel, and you say to yourself, this is not a coral reef, this is a coral growth on an artifact. And that is what's different to me when I compare corals at other locations around the world. You can see this in different varieties, and it looks very different from normal coral growth. And uh, it is like a man-made structure with a coral growth on it. Possibly a hub there, yeah. And the, the wheel would be in a circle around. This would be the rim of the wheel here. Yeah. OK. So this could be a spoke here, possibly? Yeah. Possibly a spoke? Yeah. What, what would the diameter of that rim be? That's a good question, but we would expect it to be about one meter, about three feet wide okay. in diameter. The robotic camera's survey revealed many shapes and objects familiar to Moeller, including coral formations with right angles, arches, disks, and straight shafts fused into larger masses that had the appearance of twisted wreckage. When you sit and look at these films that has been taken by the remote camera, you see all these strange artifacts or pearl growth on some artifacts or structures that appear repeatedly, time after time, at different locations at this spot. And um, you can sit there and think, well, what is this? This doesn't look like normal coral growth. And it is amazing to see that so many things and such large areas down there that are like a man-made structure. Vivica Pontien's interest in this research was heightened by a discovery she had made three years earlier, eight miles due east of the Nueva Peninsula. During her stay in Saudi Arabia, Pontien not only searched for Mount Sinai, she also made several dives in an attempt to document evidence of the Egyptian army on the Saudi side of the Gulf. And the Bible tells that Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore after they came across. So I figured there must be some stuff on the Saudi side. At one spot there is like a very shallow sort of land tongue going out in a straight angle towards Nueva. You could tell it by the shift of the color of the water. It's, it, you could see how it was turquoise far out, you know. So I thought this would be interesting for exploration. So we did some dives near to that. The scattered, irregular coral formations on the Saudi side of Aqaba resemble those previously found off the Nueva Peninsula. In the midst of them, 
Pan Tien photographed this circular object attached to what appears to have been a broken axle or hub. This discovery was significant for two reasons. Pan Tien had documented the coral encrusted form of a wheel with dimensions similar to ancient Egyptian artifacts directly across from the proposed Nueva crossing site. Her find also provided independent confirmation of earlier evidence establishing wheel-like formations on both coasts of the Red Sea in accordance with descriptions in the biblical record. And the Lord looked down on the Egyptian army, and he made the wheels of their chariots come off. While Egyptian environmental laws prohibit removal of any coral for scientific dating and analysis, photographic evidence may provide a link to the time of the Exodus. Scholars have recognized that the design of the chariot wheel can be used to identify specific periods in Egyptian history. In the waters of Aqaba, it appears that remnants of four and six spoke wheels have been discovered. These designs were used simultaneously only during Egypt's 18th dynasty and no later than about 1400 BC a time frame that coincides closely to the biblical date of the Exodus. It's just flat, extremely flat, and very wide. There are no corals, there are no pieces of rock, and we follow that far out in the Gulf of Aqaba. It got deeper and deeper, but it was very flat all the time. And the interesting thing is also that the material on the seabed is not mud, as it is in the Gulf of Suez or at other places. It's um, a thin layer of sand or silt. It is easy to walk on it if you take away the water, and there would be no limit to, to have an enormous amount of people there, except the water, of course, but that's, that's not our problem. That's, God took care of that. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way through the sea and a path through the mighty waters. Come and see the works of God. He turned the sea into dry land, and they passed through on foot. <laughs> 